Hello and welcome to Dark Side of the Mic. Today we're looking at building or making your own broadcast dynamic mic for your podcasts. As a follow-up to my original blog post a few weeks ago on converting the Behringer XM8500 into a mini SM7B style mic, links are down below for that. This is a step towards exploring other capsule options in search of a better, smoother, more articulate sound. So over the past few weeks, I've tested a few different capsules you can buy from AliExpress and I've settled on this one for the moment as my capsule of choice for this project. I have a few others still to come. This one's called the NM182 and it goes for about $10 to $15, so more expensive than your typical Chinese capsule. But I think the sound you get from it really does bear that out. It also looks a fairly premium product as well. It's encased in a gold metal body with its own golden grill. It looks really quite high end. And I've installed the capsule into a very cheap but decent yoke mount condenser body kit that's also available on AliExpress for $10 to $15. It's the only one I could find anywhere with a yoke mount and I really wanted that for this project. And with some soldering and basic supplies you can have a fairly decent looking and sounding broadcast dynamic mic for about $30. Check out the pictures on darksideofthemic.co.uk and see what you think. I've added my own dome silver badge to finish mine off because I'm an idiot. So we've decided to call this the DSB1 and I'm recording at the moment completely unprocessed into the Antelope Audio Zen Go. My gain is at 50 dB without a cloud lifter and we'll be doing some comparisons with other mics shortly to see how it sounds. Now I think this mic works best as a close talk mic working from about an inch away. So like all dynamic mics for spoken word, you want to be right on it. The capsule itself, I've set that back into the mic about two inches from the front or so. So with the windscreen, that still leaves us a fair bit of room between you and the capsule, probably about three inches when you're one inch away. That distance also helps dissipate those plosives. So even if I was to talk directly into it and say Peter Piper picked a pack of pickle pineapple pizza, the plosive rejection is really very excellent even from being so close to the microphone. So in this sense, I think it's really usable for guest interviews where they may not have the best mic technique. You can just plonk this right in front of them. If you've never plonked before, I really recommend it. And providing they're close to it, you're likely to get a fairly reasonable result every time. And as far as off-axis rejection goes, let's just do that test just now. This is me talking directly into the front of the mic. This is me from 90 degrees. And this is me from 180 degrees. And we're back to the front of the mic again. You do seem to get a little bit more pickup from the rear of the capsule than you do from the side. So maybe that lobe of sensitivity indicates that it's a bit more super cardioid than cardioid. Okay, so now let's do some comparisons with other microphones. And today we're going to read some random excerpts from some songs from the Mountain Goats. They're one of my favorite bands, so do check them out if you don't know them already. And as usual, I'll introduce each mic, uh, tell you what gain setting I'm on, and anything else that's relevant to how the test is being performed. Okay, so we'll start on the DSB-1. I'm about an inch off the mic. I'm recording at 50 dB on the Antelope Audio Zen Go, so we're ready to go. If you punish a person for dreaming their dreams, don't expect them to thank or forgive you. The best ever death metal band out of Denton, will in time both outpace and outlive you. And that's from the best ever death metal band in Denton from the All Hail West Texas album. And for the first comparison, we've moved over to the SE Electronics V7. It's a super cardioid dynamic handheld microphone. I've increased my gain to 55 dB on the Zen Go. It's a little less sensitive than what the DSB1 is. And I have a small mesh pop filter in front of the mic. He was my hero back when I was a kid. You let me down, but Chavo never once did. You called him names to try to get beneath my skin. Now your ashes are scattered on the wind. I heard his son got famous and he went nationwide, coast to coast with his dad by his side. I don't know if that's true, but I've been told. It's real sweet to grow old. And that's from the legend of Chavo Guerrero from the Beat the Champ album. And now we've moved over to the Rode Procaster. We've increased our gain again to 57 dB on the Zen Go. And we have another mesh pop filter in front of the mic. And again, I'm about an inch off of it. Beam of a flashlight all night in the woods. Hunt us like dogs and then string us up for good. Keep one step ahead of enemies. 
foretell worse things than such frightful nights as these. Lead us to the beach by our hands and bury us there in the sand. And that's from the Diaz Brothers from the Transcendental Youth album. And now we've moved over to the Behringer XM8500, the housewife's favourite. And for this one, I've moved a little bit further away from the mic because I think it gets a bit too boomy when you're right up on it. So I'm about two to three inches off the mic at the moment. My gain is at 55 dB on the Zen Go and we have a foam windscreen on the front of the mic. Play with matches if you think you need to play with matches. Seek out the hidden places where the fire burns hot and bright. Find where the heat's unbearable and stay there if you have to. Don't hurt anybody on your way up to the light. And that's from Spent Gladiator 1, also from the Transcendental Youth album. And now we've moved over to the legendary Shure SM7B. We have the gain up to 60 dB and we're just using the standard foam windscreen that comes with that mic. I'm about an inch off it and this is how this one sounds. I played video games in a drunken haze. I was 17 years young. Hurt my knuckles punching the machines. The taste of scotch rich on my tongue. And then Cathy showed up and we hung out. Trading swigs from a bottle all bitter and clean. Locking eyes, holding hands. Twin high maintenance machines. And that was from this year from the Sunset Tree album. And finally, we've moved over to the Bayer Dynamic M21TG, which is an instrument dynamic mic. We've decreased our gain to 55 dB, and we're using a standard pop filter in front of that mic. We're going to commandeer the local airwaves to tell the neighbours what's been going on, and they will shake their heads and wag their bony fingers in all the wrong directions, and by daybreak we'll be gone. I'm going to get myself in fighting trim, Scope out every angle of unfair advantage. I'm going to bribe the officials. I'm going to kill all the judges. It's going to take you people years to recover from all of the damage. And that was from Up the Wolves from the Sunset Tree album. And now we're back on the DSB1 for some final thoughts on the overall sound. Our gain is back at 50 dB and I'm about an inch off the mic. At this point, I've turned on some EQ and mild compression to let you hear how that sounds. Listening back to the examples there, it seems to me that the DSB1 capsule seems to fit somewhere in between the SCV7 and the Rode Procaster. The Procaster definitely has some more low-end warmth and feels much darker, but the highs feel very similar to me on both of those other mics, and a simple low-end EQ boost, as I've done here, really gets you into a really nice place with it. Overall, I think the DSB-1 capsule is very articulate, and that was most obvious with the XM8500 examples, which felt positively muddy in the side-by-sides. But I think it's the high end of the DSB-1 is what sets it apart from other Chinese capsules, which tend to be a bit harsh sounding up there. Here it's really quite nice and smooth, and sounds really quite dry and focused for spoken word applications. At times it can feel a little bit hollow, but with a little bit of EQ you can really clean that up. And when you consider this was put together on a budget of $30, I think this is a really compelling option if you have to kit out three to four mics for a multi-person podcast, for example. So, is this something you would like to try and make for yourself? Would you buy this if it was available? Now, I'm not turning my flat into some sort of sweatshop churning out dynamic mics, but all the links are below if you want to try for yourself. I think it's a really easy, straightforward project to take on with some very basic soldering skills. If you're a millennial, please find a grown-up to supervise to ensure you don't burn yourself or your parents' house down. Okay, that's all for this week. Try making your own mic. Don't take any offence and do take care.